This video is not for everybody. Let me be totally clear on that. Okay, it's actually quite a niched video, but it's one that's been requested a lot and one that is really important because if you are someone that has this specific genetic factor, it's very, very important that you know how you should alter your diet in general. Now, I'm gonna make this a little bit geared towards the ketogenic diet. However, it is going to work for just about anybody. The thing is, you just need to know these specific things. Now, what we're talking about today is something called the AP OE4 allele. So basically what it is, is it's a genetic risk factor. It's a genetic change. It's how our bodies process lipids. So I'm gonna break it down a little bit with what it is, but I'm not gonna bore you with the details because if you know that you have the APOE4, then you already know, and we need to talk about what you need to do differently with the ketogenic diet. You can get tested for this. You can ask your doctor. You can get genetic testing. First of all, we'll break it all down. Then I'll address what you should change with your diet. Okay. Hey, please make sure you hit that red subscribe button and then hit that little bell icon. That way you get notifications when I post new videos. I do post videos every single day, so make sure you're coming back to my channel every day so you can get your uh, daily fix. Also wanna make sure you check out ButcherBox down below in the description. There's a special link there. If you're doing the ketogenic diet or you're just someone that eats meat, you wanna make sure you're getting lower saturated fat content and a higher omega-3 and lower omega-6 values. So what that means is grass-fed, grass-finished meat, but ButcherBox gets it for you cheaper than you would pay at the grocery store and it gets delivered right to your doorstep. Plus, there's a special discount for people that watch my videos. So check them out in the description after you watch this video. All right, so APOE4. It's the most important genetic risk factor for Alzheimer's disease, but it also has a lot of other pieces. The reason it's, it's such a risk factor for Alzheimer's disease is it affects the oxidation of a lot of these healthy fats. It affects the oxidation of uh, docosahexaenoic acid, okay? So when we're looking at uh, different kinds of omega-3s, we got DHA, right? It makes it so we oxidize so much DHA, it doesn't get into the brain, which means we don't get the neuroprotective effects. So it can cause Alzheimer's to rear its ugly head a lot easier. It's also kind of a codes for a mutant lipoprotein. So basically it alters your lipid metabolism. It makes it so that if you have this, you don't process fats the same way, which means the ketogenic diet gets really sketchy because you're mainly eating fats, right? So what do we do? Now the other thing is it also alters the immune system, which makes you more prone to inflammation. This is a very scary thing because inflammation is the root of all disease. So there's a number of different things we have to pay attention to. The main four things that we really want to be paying attention to with APOE4 on the ketogenic diet are going to be increasing monounsaturated fatty acids, which we'll talk about, decreasing your saturated fat, increasing omega-3 to 6 ratio, lowering your oxidized LDL, and then ultimately lowering inflammation too, which kind of goes without saying. Full disclaimer, guys, this video is all about changes for these people. This doesn't apply to everybody, but it's still good to know. Okay, this green stuff is foods that you can eat a ton of. Blue, moderation. Red, avoid, or be very careful with the quality. Olive oil, douse it, okay? Olive oil, the whole purpose of eating, in my opinion, is to be able to consume olive oil. I love olive oil, it's good stuff. High monounsaturated fatty acid content plus has been shown to lower oxidized LDL. So we get the monounsaturated fatty acids that the body can process if you have APOE4, and you also get the benefit of reducing oxidized LDL. Big difference between regular LDL and oxidized LDL, remember. Oxidized LDL is LDL that has been damaged from the uh, lymphatic system, basically. It's been damaged through multiple different processes, so it's not normal LDL, okay? Avocado, you can eat tons of avocado, okay? High levels of monounsaturated fatty acids again, but also the gut health link, okay? Because we alter the immune system with APOE4, if we take care of our gut and we get the right gut biome, we can actually affect the immune system in a positive way. So good fibers there that can do that. Fatty fish, high levels of DHA. You need to be eating whole source whole food sources, excuse me, of fatty fish. So sardines, anchovies, mackerel, all that stuff, because they're DHA that's combined with phosphatidylcholine. Phosphatidylcholine makes it so that the DHA is more bioavailable and gets into your brain. If you have this, you oxidize DHA, which means you need a lot more than other people do. Then shellfish, this is a phenomenal one. Shellfish ends up having a high amount of what are called non-cholesterol sterols. Okay, so they compete with other cholesterols for absorption which means that because they're non-cholesterols, but they still bind to the receptors and they still get on the boats along with the cholesterol, they take the place of the cholesterol. So it makes it so that the cholesterol ends up being lower and our oxidized cholesterol lowers. So it kind of acts as like a, a placeholder for the cholesterol without actually having cholesterol. 
Point is, shellfish should be your friend with APOE4. Okay, here's what you can have in moderation. MCT oils, technically derived from saturated fats, however, they elevate ketones so much you get neuroprotective effects that I think are going to be beneficial and outweigh some of the other negative pieces. Uh, liver, high levels of arachidonic acid. So that's gonna protect the brain. So if you can eat liver, go for it. Egg, also high levels of arachidonic acid, but also can be inflammatory. So cage-free, pasture-raised only. Nuts, limit it to one ounce per meal. Okay, no more than that, period. Weigh it out. Because it's so high in omega-6s, I don't want you to have that ratio skewed where it's gonna throw off, again, the brain. We don't want, we, the biggest risk, again, with this whole APOE4 is not the cholesterol issue, okay? It's the Alzheimer's disease uh, risk issue, all right? Okay, things to avoid entirely. I hate to say it, because I like a lot of dairy foods on keto, but if you have this APOE4, you should limit dairy. Dairy fats, although can be good for fat loss and believe it or not, good for heart disease, are linked to oxidized cholesterol. Not that big of a deal if you don't have the APOE4. Okay, but if you do have this genetic mutation, this becomes an issue. You should limit dairy. Red meat, unfortunately, you probably should limit as well. But again, this is a small subset. If you're just watching this, don't avoid red meat just to avoid it. And if you do eat red meat, you do need to get the high quality stuff that is lower fat, okay? Low quality meat has higher fat content because they pump these animals full of grains, okay? So that's why I mentioned ButcherBox earlier, okay? High quality omega-3. If you're gonna have red meat, at least use a high quality one like that, okay? Um, simply because people with APOE4 metabolize the lipids from saturated fat within red meat differently than or the other people, normal people. Coconut oil, normally my best friend, but with APOE4, it can increase oxidized LDL. So you gotta be careful. Now let's talk some supplements for a minute that'll help you out with this. Resveratrol, okay? Well, we could break it down. There's a lot of better ways to skin a cat than just resveratrol, but for all intents and simple purposes and for being cost effective, 250 milligrams of resveratrol can help reduce oxidized LDL in APOE4 individuals. Also, get vitamin K2 in the MK7 form that has a better half-life, so it makes it so you can actually utilize minerals in your body getting into the bones, which ultimately can affect this whole system. And finally, curcumin. Okay, WNT uh, signaling, activating WNT signaling and other kind of genetic processes ultimately help us reduce oxidized LDL and increase what are called CERT2 and CERT1, CERT3, mainly CERT1, so it makes it so that we have an anti-aging process, which is gonna be good for anyone with APOE4. I know this was very complicated and random for most people, but if you have the APOE4S, then you know this is for you and it's hopefully helping you out a ton. So as always, please keep it locked in here on my channel. Please check out ButcherBox down below and I will see you tomorrow.